Just signing on. Uh, good morning. I see that uh, there are some people on and uh, some people still coming on. It's it's good to be together again. Uh, we'll give people a, a couple more minutes to sign on and uh, uh, hope you're doing well. It is... Uh, Gosh, it continues to be a very difficult time for all of us, you know, but uh, this is one way. It's been a creative way, I think, in a, in a lot of ways, a good way for for us to remain together and connected and reminded that um, the church is bigger than than a building and our mission and ministry is, is certainly bigger than what happens in our beautiful churches. That doesn't mean that we can't wait to get back in them, but right now at this time, uh, the vestries of both Transfiguration Church in Buchanan, West Virginia, and St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Weston, West Virginia, met this week and and have decided to wait. So uh, uh, we are anxious to uh, to get back to church, but we don't want to compromise anybody's safety. And with the numbers spiking the way they are, we just feel like it's not the right time yet. So I thank you again for. Uh, for joining us here on, on Facebook Live and, and going to the effort to, to be together. Your presence is certainly valued and important to us. I'm also reminded, and I'll mention this, probably both these things again, uh, that there are uh, some people near and dear to both our church communities and, and to you who are facing serious health challenges. And um, I would just please ask that you lift those folks up in your prayers and and hold them close they they need you and we need them so um if this pandemic has taught us anything it is that we need to be very intentional i think about uh, praying for one another reaching out to one another calling one another messaging one another uh, remaining in contact with one another whether that be by phone or social media so um, this is one way that we do that so please keep those in our community who are facing serious uh, health challenges in your prayers uh, today is the eighth sunday after pentecost and we pray blessed be god father son and holy spirit and blessed be god's kingdom now and forever amen Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply, multiply upon us your mercy, so that with you is our ruler and guide, 
we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. This is a reading from Matthew's Gospel. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Now, though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of the garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowds in parables. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away, sold everything he had, and he bought it. Once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets. This is how it will be at the end of the age. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. And he said to them, Therefore, every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Almighty God, we have heard your word proclaimed here in our midst. May your word shape and form us into the people you have called us to become. Amen. It, it, it is difficult. And, and in fact, it's more than a little bit risky to reduce Jesus and his message and his ministry to a few words or a single concept. Certainly, Jesus, like all people, was a complicated person. But I would propose that if one thing stands out about Jesus, and, and Jesus' message and ministry is that he came to make it known just how close God is to each and every one of us. I mean, think about it. He took on our existence. He took on our flesh. Jesus took on our, our human existence. He understood and experienced our, our, our emotions. He, he understood and he experienced what it was like to have human hopes and, and dreams and, and human disappointments and, and human letdowns. So of all the things that Jesus did and all the things that Jesus said, I think that we can agree that certainly Jesus came to remind us just how close God is to us. 
And, and Jesus had a phrase that he used to describe God's closeness, and, and that phrase was the kingdom of God. And you, you may hear it translated the kingdom of heaven, or you may hear it translated the reign of God, but they all mean basically the same things. The same thing, and that is that, that God dwells in our midst right here, right now. And in today's gospel, Jesus uses parables to make this point. Now, I know that you probably already know this, that parables are much more than just cute little stories. But, 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 but parables are short illustrations that are intended to surprise us. They're short illustrations that are intended to shock us. They are, in fact, very extreme. If you know what a parabolic curve is, it's a curve that's extreme. It goes extremely up sharply and then extremely down sharply. So parables go to extremes to shock the hearer into looking at things in new ways. So when Jesus says the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, or the, the kingdom of God is like a bit of yeast, mustard seeds and yeast were teeny, tiny, small, little, insignificant things. But if you accidentally drop a mustard seed in a field, well, it grows and grows and grows, and it takes over the whole field. It is like kudzu on the side of a highway. And in a similar way, if you take just a little teeny tiny bit of yeast and drop it into flour and water, it grows and it grows and it, it grows exponentially. And in a similar way, if we can just use a teeny tiny bit of faith and believe in the power of God's presence, if we can eke out just an itsy bitsy teeny weeny little bit of faith in God's power and presence, that power, that presence, can grow and grow and grow and eventually take over our lives and transform us in ways previously unimaginable. When Jesus says the kingdom of God is like a dragnet, Jesus intends to surprise his audience. He intends to shock them. He is telling them that when the power and presence of God is extended to human beings, it's not just extended to the big fish. It's not just extended to the prize catch. No, no, no. The dragnet drags all along the bottom of the sea, and it picks up everything the big choice fish, and the other items that people might discard and consider as junk. The dragnet is intended to catch it all, the good and the bad, the saint and the sinner, the prized and the junk. Now, unfortunately, we have heard these parables so many times that their shock value has worn off. Let me ask you to do something. Let's dream. Let's dream just a little bit, just, 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 just a bit, just a little bit the size of maybe yeast or a mustard seed, just, just a teeny weeny bit, just a crack, and believe that the power of God, the kingdom of God, is in our midst right now. I'm wondering what it might be like if we took just a, a small, minuscule amount of time, maybe just a few seconds a day next week, 
every day next week. Just take a few seconds and dream and believe that the power and the presence of God is in your midst. And maybe if we do that for a few seconds every day, it can grow into minutes. And if we would do that, I think the results would be staggering. The growth of God's power would spread and grow like kudzu on a highway and overtake not only our lives, but the lives of those people that we come in contact with. I want to invite you today, just, just to dream, just a little bit. Dream about a church where the invitation of God's love is like a dragnet extended to all people, the good and the bad, the saint and the sinner, the prize and the junk. What if we were to allow ourselves to believe that we're all invited in, that we all depend on the power of God, and, and we know that all of us are loved, all of us are called, and all of us are redeemed by God's grace. Let's be a people who dream. Dream of a God who will surprise us, shock us, with God's presence that will grow and grow and grow not based on our own efforts, but because of God's grace and love for us. Let's be a people who dream that there is room for all of us and we are incomplete when anyone is left out. Let's be a people who dream and believe in the hope that our dreams can come true. And let us pray. Good and gracious God, you have called us to be dreamers. You have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning, this eighth Sunday of Pentecost, you have fed us with your word. Now send us into the world in peace. Grant us the strength and courage to love you and to serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. I said at the beginning while we were waiting for others to join us, and I'll repeat it, that the vestries of St. Paul's Church in Weston and Transfiguration Church in Buchanan met this week. We have decided to continue on Facebook Live uh, for the next few weeks. Uh, we are all anxious to get back into our beautiful churches, but know that we can't, just don't feel that we can do that safely right now. So um, we'll continue to be with you on Facebook Live. Um, i am also become aware this week that there are those in our community who are facing very serious and uh, health issues. So I ask you to please pray for them. Uh, if this pandemic has taught us anything, it's uh, reminded us of our need to be intentional about how we reach out to one another through our prayers, through our phone calls, through our text message, through our, through our social media. Um, I would uh, also uh, remind you that we, um, I've, ha I've had several of you ask me about how to support our church financially. Uh, I have posted the addresses in the comment box. 
of both St. Paul's Church and uh, St. Transfiguration Church and uh, uh, our diocese. So you can, our church continues to experience certainly financial difficulties and expenses, even though we are not gathering every week. So your, your uh, donations would be greatly appreciated. Uh, you can mail those to the churches or you can go online to the wvdiocese.org and make a donation that way. Again, I thank you. I thank you for all your sacrifices, all that you're doing to recognize the sacredness of your life and the life of your neighbor. We will continue to be intentional about how we take care of one another and look forward to seeing you back next week. Please know that you're in our prayers and keep us in your prayers as well. God bless.